I grabbed my crap, said I wanted a divorce, and stormed out. She ran in front of me and begged and pleaded for me to come inside and talk to her. She swore up and down she wouldn't talk to him ever again. What's going on everybody? Hope everybody's feeling good. Hope everybody's doing well. We are back with another story post. You guys read the title? Let's just get into it. So, I am filing for divorce after my wife had an emotional affair on her deployment. Basically, my wife and I had a perfect marriage until she went on a year-long deployment starting March of 2020. We have been together for eight years and married for seven. She completely abandoned me during the deployment during the pandemic when I was completely alone with no family within 2,500 miles, only hearing from her every 9 to 10 days. Even though she worked on a computer all day, every day, it was able to email me. It was always a short paragraph with no substance to it. Fast forward to when she comes home. She wanted absolutely nothing to do with me. She refused any physical intimacy whatsoever and absolutely would not talk to me or communicate with me about our relationship or anything for the first three entire months. When she finally talked, she said she was no longer in love with me and no longer attracted to me. We started counseling. I gave her space. I gave her time. I found messages to her superior. She quotes below. I gave her an ultimatum. Me or him emotional affair so stop contact with him or lose me a month or so goes by supposedly no contact i decide to take a break i come home for my suitcase and more clothes for a trip to visit family and she is on the phone with her superior when i walk in marriage over some of you were asking what my wife said to her superior co-worker here are direct quotes i just want you to know that i and the rest of the division love and miss you very much, especially me. I've been a mess thinking about you. I should never have told you that I, I couldn't talk to you anymore. I said that in spite due to an argument with my husband. He was extremely mad with me. I sent that and showed him the message because I was so defeated and upset. It was not your fault. I feel so guilty about it. I abandoned you. As you have always, always been there for me. I immediately regretted sending that, but I was too upset and scared to resend it. I felt lost with what was going on in my own life. It was hard putting on a face for my family. I couldn't wait to come back to work and talk to you. The office could literally be set ablaze, and I wouldn't have and I wouldn't have cared. I was worried about you. I was going to stay late to catch up on stuff, as is my custom for multiple reasons, but instead I left immediately. My paperwork was still scattered across my desk. I would do anything for you. Whatever you need, please let me be there for you. I can't not have you in my life. Man, I know this had to hurt. Imagine you're a, your wife is writing this to someone, telling them I would do anything for you. Wow. She continued, with everything that happened, God, I am so worried about you. Please let me help you. Please tell me you want nothing from me. To go F myself. I don't care. I just want you to be okay. You mean the world to me. And I would do whatever it takes to keep you safe. Love you. As do we all. Stay strong. We have your back. She met this guy on or just before deployment. Guy, guy was having a hard time balancing work and home life. And confided in my wife. He was or is getting divorced. My wife is the only one he worked with who knew, knows that. I told her that this message was absolutely an emotional affair and that she had to stop talking with him permanently or I was out. I ended up going home last night to get my suitcase and more stuff for a longer time away and for a trip to visit family. She was talking to him, she was talking to him on the phone when I walked in. She has apparently talked with him every day since I started my two-week break on Monday, and she initiated the conversations. She actually started Monday night as soon as I was gone. She messaged him first, so anyway, I grabbed my crap, 
said I wanted a divorce and stormed out. She ran in front of me and begged and pleaded for me to come inside and talk to her. She swore up and down she wouldn't talk to him ever again, said it wasn't worth it, aka the exact same crap she said last time. We talked for a bit more and she said she still loves me and cares for me deeply, but she isn't in love and she is very unhappy with me. She says she has been for a while and that I am the source of her stress and unhappiness. She's apparently been super happy the last week by herself and she doesn't know if she if she even wants to be with me anymore because of it. She wants to sit down and talk after I get back in after I get back in 2 weeks to see how she feels then and if she wants to make it work. She said things with us were perfect before her deployment and that's the only thing keeping her around. But why am I keeping her around? She doesn't respect my boundaries and broke my trust. I think divorce is the only option. I'm done. Filing for divorce immediately after I get home from my trip. There you go. Let me give my thoughts. I, I was so scared I was going to read you saying, okay, I'm going to give it another shot. No, she clearly doesn't have anybody to monkey branch to. She clearly doesn't have anybody to move on to. Homeboy is ignoring her. He's dealing with his own issues and she's begging him to come back. The second he says, okay, I'm divorced, let's go, she's gone. It's not on her terms. So I'm so glad you didn't say, okay, we're going to come home and talk about this because as soon as he or anybody else who she deems is, who she thinks is better than you, offers her an opportunity for a relationship or opportunity just to leave you, she's going to take it. But as long as she has no one, she needs time to think about if she wants to be with you. Buying some time, and I know you know this, which is why you're filing for that divorce immediately. My guy, salute to you. Get that divorce. You got the evidence. You got the evidence. It, sh it should work in your favor, man. It should work in your favor. And man, I, I wish you could I wish you could cut this the trip short and just do it immediately because with her knowing that I don't know if she 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 with her knowing that okay he's his mind is made up, he wants to divorce, she might try to jump the gun and you know and try to make up lies and do all types of crap, man. Just make sure you got your evidence and do your thing, man. You know what you need to do. You know what you need to do. Guys, let me know what you think about this in the comments. Salute to him for just being ready to divorce. Get out of there. Don't let somebody disrespect you like that. Don't do it, man. I've been through it. A lot of us have been through it. Don't do it. Let me know what you think about this in the comments. If this is the first story you've heard on True Story, stick around. I'm going to go ahead and uh, add a flashback story. With that being said, I'll catch you guys at the next one. subscriber email story update um this is from if you guys remember the story with my wife and the piano guy or my wife cheated with the piano guy at church i'm um, just a quick overview of that video is basically in the, t the title you know he, he found out his wife was cheating with the organist um you guys comments on that video were hilarious okay yeah, the organist was in the organs, all types of things. But anyway, guys, just check that video out. But check that video out if you have not. Um, he gives a uh, quick update here, um, and he continues with uh, another story. So let's go ahead and get into this one. So the subject on this is update. Also, this dude eating cereal, then a late night call. All right, so like I said, he has a, he gives a quick update and then he goes into another story. So let's check it out. Hey, true story. I've written you before. My previous email was called My Wife and the Piano Guy. That was a good while ago. Thanks for reading that one. Hope you like this one. Ironically, I have taken up piano as a hobby lately. Always wanted to learn how to play when I was a kid, but never did. The story I've wanted to share this time is about a female I met not long after I got full custody of my son. I don't know what category this story would fall under, maybe be more careful about the women we choose to be around. I've told this to some guys I work with on a graveyard shift. 
and they all find it hilarious. So I want to share this one with you. I'll try to keep this as simple as I can, but this chick was a real piece of work. So I'm taking my son to school one morning, and as I'm about to pull up in front of the school, I see this chick, thick redhead, with that kind of fatty you can see from the front. She's walking in the opposite direction that I'm driving in. So I drop my kid off, I bust a U-turn back, I drop my kid off, I bust a U-turn back towards those hips and thighs. I'm just like imagining this, like you just, all right, kid, get out, hurry up. <laughs> I stop her at the end of the block, roll my window down, and pretty much just yell out, hey, mom, what's good? She looks, smiles, and walks over to my truck. I chop it up with her real quick, ask for the number, but she says her phone's off, but I can meet her at her mailbox around one o'clock. I thought that's weird. I should have took it as red flag, but I was like, okay. So at one, I met her and we talked for about 30 to 45 minutes. Everything seems cool. She tells me about her family. She's new to town, but has a sister and brother-in-law living here. She then tells me her apartment number and to come by after I take my kid to school the next morning. So I'm thinking, bet it's on, right? Next morning, I get up, get ready, putting on one of my favorite colognes, that Issei Mayaki. Get my kid ready for school. So after I drop my kid off, I head to her place. When I get to her house that morning, it's in the projects, by the way. I knock on the door. It's answered by some eating a bowl of cereal. My first thought was, this must be the brother-in-law she told me about yesterday while we converted by the mailbox. I mean, she wouldn't invite me over with another living here, I ask myself. Well, this guy was like, I can help you. I ask. Let's call her Jay. I ask if Jay is available. He says, yeah, come in. She's upstairs taking a shower. I close the door behind me, but I leave it cracked in case I gotta make a quick move. Dude puts down a cereal and runs upstairs. I can hear water stop running as he yells her name. Then I hear whispering going on. I know something ain't right now. You tried to bleep this dude after I went to work, didn't you? Well, that was my signal to go. I rushed back to my truck and I peeled out of there. I call my homeboy and tell him about it. He's laughing so hard on the phone after he first curses me out for one going to this chick's house in the projects without my hammer. You know what I mean by hammer. Second, not being able to even call this chick before I went. Well, I leave her alone for a while and concentrate on other stuff. Flash forward about a year, I go to court for an issue with my son's mom trying to fight back for custody, but it didn't work. I'm in the courthouse seated, waiting for the judge, and people are taking seats around me. Who sits right next to me? Jay. I'm like, yo, I know you. She responded, I know you too. We kind of forgot about each other since it's been a year. Well, the judge comes out, and we all sit quiet as he calls everyone up one by one. My last name is at the end of the alphabet, so I go up last. Jay goes up way before me, so I figured that's the last I'll see her. As me and my lawyer leave out of the courthouse, out of nowhere, Jay runs up and gives me a phone number written on a piece of paper. She says she wants to make up for last time. I took the number and I say, we'll see. What was so funny? That when she walks off, my lawyer even said, dang, she is thick. Well, you'll be back in court again, I see. I told him, heck no, I will not. I call her up that weekend and ask if she's free. She says, yeah, come pick her up. I pick her up and we go to get some liquor and some KFC. That's literally all it took. Went and got a room and I enjoyed myself that night. After I was finished, I guess I got that post-nut clarity syndrome because she just wasn't as hot to me anymore. What, what did, what did uh, Lil Wayne say? As soon as I come, I come to my senses. She starts blabbering about how messed up her life is. How that guy that was eating the cereal that morning was so abusive. How she lost custody of both her kids. How she can't keep a job and she has no money. Well, I felt a little bad, so I gave her 20 bucks before we left the hotel. Wow. Paid for her services. I dropped her off and was like, we'll do this again another day. I really had no intentions on seeing her again. But about three weeks later, she's calling me asking if I had 20 bucks. I could loan her until she starts this new job she got. I told her congrats on the job. Well, I know the odds of her paying me back my money are slim, so I ask her where she is and I go pick her up. When I pick her up, I tell her I'll give her the money, but she needs to do me a favor. Oh, 
A good old fashioned blow. Now I don't promote prostitution nor do I support it, but she wasn't getting my money for free. Well, after this one time, this went on for about five more times. She was always needing something to eat or cigarettes. Thing is, a couple of those times, I think she had a boyfriend, but I never would ask any questions. Wow. Then it stopped. I didn't hear from her anymore. Didn't bother me much, but then I get a message from her on Facebook Messenger. She just says, hey, just checking on you. I'm like, cool. And I tell her that I hope she's doing well. She responds that she is pregnant. I responded, well, it ain't mine. You can't get pregnant from swallowing. She texts back, LOL. And that should have been the last I heard from her. I would have thought that was about nine months ago. Well, about two weeks ago, I'm sleeping. It's around 3 a.m. My phone rings, but it's ringing on Facebook Messenger. I try to answer it, but it hangs up. I check to see who called, and I see it's Jay. I text back, yo, you trying to call me? She texts back, yeah, I'm trying to see something. Now, me being the a-hole that I am, plus it's 3 a.m., I respond, what you trying to see, some D? And then I proceeded to say how much I missed her mouth. She texts, LOL, and says, no, I have a question. I respond, okay, just call back. But she texts, no, the baby and Jimmy are sleeping. And she's trying to be quiet. I ask her, who is Jimmy? Is, is that her man? But she texts back, something like that. So I say, what's up? She then was asking, when was the last time we hooked up? Now, this threw me off. I'm like, you don't remember? She's like, no, babe, help me remember. At this point, she's got me confused because I only had full sex with her one time with a condom. That was over a year and a half ago. The rest of the time, it was only oral. So I ask her if something is wrong. And she says, I don't want Jimmy to be the baby's father. I want it to be yours. Well, I said, that's impossible. And then I say, yo, give me a call. She says again, no, she might wake the baby. So I say, well, call me tomorrow when you can. Then I put my phone down. Then it starts ringing again and it's Jay calling. I answer and some dude is on the other line asking if I'm sure this ain't my baby because it can't be his. I'm like, dude, don't call my phone no more. And good luck raising that kid. Then I block Jay's account on Facebook. That was probably one of the weirdest moments of my life. I'm expecting to hear a woman's voice, but it's a dude, which means he's going through her phone and found out his baby mama is a slut bucket. Kind of feel sorry for dude, but she's for the streets. I knew that when all it took was a bucket of chicken. Well, true story, I just wanted to share this. And as Belle Bib DeVoe said, Never trust a big butt and a smile. Thanks for listening. I really appreciate your channel. Keep it up. Wow. <laughs> Let me get my thoughts. You said you knew that when all it took was a bucket of chicken. I knew that when you said you pulled up on her. Hey, Ma, was good? Yeah, that's somebody for the streets. Let's start off with your update. It is very ironic <laughs> that now you take piano lessons. <laughs> So, because in the original story, your wife cheats on you with the organist at church, and wow, you're taking piano lessons now. Hey, salute to you, man. <laughs> I think that's just so funny. It's like the other story I did where the girl's AP, he was a parkour guy. He did parkour, and he plummeted. He died, you know, parkouring. And after the divorce, the husband ends up going skydiving and doing all this crazy stuff, and I'm just like, that's so ironic that he would do that, but... Um, thanks for the, the update and plus the bonus, the story. So that's pretty good. All right. So, you know, like I said, I knew she was for the streets by how you approached her and how she responded. Man, leave these chicks alone. You got a son to raise. You got full custody of your son because your wife, she just doesn't have anything. She's not capable of raising him. You don't have time to be messing with these hood rats. God, I don't know what you were thinking. You were you were uh, too focused on that behind and them hips. And like you said, once you came, you was like, oh, she doesn't look that good. You said, it's not worth it. And you went back again and again. And this woman is chaotic. When you first met her, she invites you to her house with another man there that she's sleeping with. Come on now. She wants she she wants some chaos. You got a son. You ain't, you ain't got time to be dealing with that. When you left that time, that should have been the last time you ever spoke to her, ever talked to her. In my opinion. In my opinion. 
nonetheless, this is a very funny story. Don't get me wrong. It's a funny story. But, um, man, you're taking some risk. And like I said, you got a kid. But like you said, this woman is 100 percent for the streets. Yeah, not worth your time. But I really, really appreciate the update. I think I find it funny that you're playing the piano now after what happened in the first story. Like I said, guys, if you haven't seen that story, it's in the description and in the cards if you haven't seen it. But hopefully you're done with this chick for good. Leave her alone. She's trouble. Guys, let me know what you think about this email. What you think about his update? What do you think about this story? Go ahead and leave a comment for email one. And let's go ahead and check out another email. All right, so email number two here. My story on my ex relationship. Hmm. Well, it's exactly 6.30 a.m. Just got off work and my ex is heading to work after I told her she has to move out today. I decided to share my story so I can let it out instead of letting it sit inside. We just completed three years together in October. Our relationship wasn't perfect. We argued a lot as well as we would break up here and there. It was my first relationship, so I wasn't perfect. There's a lot of things that I did that I regret. A lot of things that I knew, but I didn't understand deeply until it happened to me. As much as we argued, she would say a lot of awful things to me. How much I wanted out of the relationship and couldn't find the strength to leave. I knew I loved her, but I didn't know if I was in love with her. I didn't know if I could deal with the things she has told me. Last week, those things got ugly. About three weeks ago, after we took a trip from Cali, once we got home, I had some tingles in my stomach being with her, and it was something about that trip that made me start falling for her. Right after that, she wanted to break up. She said she needed some time alone. She wanted to move back with her parents. Once she told me that she wanted to break up, I could tell how deeply in love I was for her because I was in pain. Oh. I begged her to stay told her I would do better, that I have changed. Eventually, I convinced her to stay. The next two weeks, I became a better person to her. I bought her flowers, wrote cute notes to her. I guarantee this don't work. Every morning, prepared her lunch, make her offers, and clean up more around the house. But it wasn't enough. Mm -hmm. I guess because after those two weeks, she wanted to break up again. Yep. She was already done. She was done way before she even told you. She said it felt fake. She told me she wanted to be free. She wanted to be single. That day she went to work and I was laying in bed alone. I would have many episodes of panic attacks one after another, as well as a mental breakdown. I felt so powerless that I couldn't get her back. I felt that I have lost her because as much as I tried, I couldn't convince her this new me was going to stay and that I was going to bury all of the old memories with new happy ones. She still stood her ground. She was playing games though. She would still kiss me and hug me and I would get my hopes up, thinking she'd get back with me. But she still wanted to be free. After a week, I was over her. After surrounding myself with my loved ones and with their unconditional love and support, I was happy. I cried every chance I got to let it all out. The funny part is, when she saw I was moving on, she got butt hurt and wanted to get back. Huh. After three days of calling and texting from her, I finally caved in. I went to her and talked it out. We got back together. Eh, not good. We have kids, so I was trying to make it work. I told her I needed her to delete all the guys she talked to and flirted with in order for us to get back together. And she did. She wasn't talking to no one else. I was trying to build that trust again, but today temptation got the best of me. While listening to one of your videos, you gave me the idea that I could go into my carrier's website and look at the texts and call logs. As much as I didn't want to, I eventually did it. I found out she was texting two other guys since yesterday. From the second she left the door till she went to sleep, after a long day at work, I finally got home and confronted her about it. And my suspicions were correct. I guess she's been flirting with the guy at work when she was free. Once we got back together, she told me she stopped the flirting, but continued to talk to him to slowly let him down. She said she didn't want people at work talking crap and didn't want to be mean. Even after I told her to show me her phone so I could see the conversation they were having, she wouldn't let me look at her phone. She said she deleted the conversations. I told her she needed to move out today, so either she packs her own things or I'm doing it myself and taking it to her parents. Wow. Let me get my thoughts. 
Whoa, man. So first, I'm going to say I'm going to write you back here and let you know, send an update on this. Let us know what what happened because you kind of left us with you're packing her stuff. You told her to leave, you know, so I'm curious to know um, you sent this. You sent this uh, a little bit ago, not too long ago, but you sent it a little bit ago. So. So go ahead and send an update and let us know what happened. But um, yeah, I could I could kind of tell this was going to end bad. Um, when you say temptation got the best of you, I thought you did something wrong. But it turns out you just had that gut feeling again, and you went in and checked. Here's the thing about getting back with somebody who cheated: you're just never going to trust them again, ever. It's going to be impossible to trust them again. And even if she actually was not doing anything. You could have looked at that call log and saw nothing. You would have felt good for a little bit, but then eventually you would have felt weird again because it it had happened. So you'd always worry. So that's why sometimes it's just not even worth it. It's not even worth it going back. But man, she she's still talking to that coworker, and then she made an excuse. Well, I have to let him down easy. Why do you care about this guy's feelings if you you have a whole relationship? Why do you care about somebody else's feelings? Oh, I know why, because you're still banging him. That's exactly what it is. She shouldn't be caring about his feelings if she's with you and you guys have kids. Doesn't make any sense. So you did the right thing. Boot her out. It's not worth it. Not worth your time. Guys, let me know what you think about this email. Um, also, email number one. Let me know about that update. If you want to send in a story, send it to truestorynation at gmail.com. Here, I'll put it on the screen. That's truestorynation at gmail.com.